Welcome to Pixel Composer tutorial. In this tutorial, I will cover the topic of a feedback system. So in general, the feedback system is a way for you to send the output of a node back as an input in the next frame. The setup is really simple. Like in this example, I'm just gonna have a circle and I'm just gonna send it to blur. To create a feedback system, you first select the output and then you just send it back to the input. Could be input of the same node or input of any node. Now when you release your mouse, a pop-up will show asking you whether to create a feedback or a loop groups. We're gonna talk about that in separate video. In this one, we're gonna select feedback. Now you create this dash feedback lines. And when you try to play the animation, you will see that the, the surface here become incrementally blur, right? So what it does is in the first frame when there's no previous frame data, it's gonna use the default input here and then send it to the blur node to blur a surface. Now in the next frame, instead of using this original surface, it's gonna use the output from the blur node, send it back and then blur it again. So it become more blur, more blur, more blur, more blur in each frames, creating this animation. Now to remove feedback, you can right click on a junction with feedback. So either the output junction here or the input here, you right click and it will show you the list of all connection. So we just select the one that have this feedback icon to remove it. Now with blur node, it doesn't look really interesting because we can already adjust the blur by adjusting the size, right? But the feedback system can be used with many nodes to create really, really interesting effect. One node that made for this feedback system is a diffuse. Now if you plug the surface to the diffuse node, you're gonna see that the, the surface kind of distort a bit, right? But there's no built-in animation. Now, what happens if we feedback the output back to the input of the diffuse node? Then we will create this explosion animation. And you can adjust all kind of property in here to get a different result. You can try experiment with many nodes. Stuff like this place node can be a good contender for like this kind of experiment. And it can give you something, something weird, something interesting. Another way to use feedback system is to create a trail effect. So we're gonna start with a basic animation. We just have a surface move to the right. Now I want to add trail, a movement trail. The first thing I will do is I'm gonna put it to a blend node. Because what we want here is we want to blend the previous frame with the current frame. So we can plug the feedback here back as a background of the next frame. And the foreground is going to be the current frame here. Now when you play the animation, we will have this street. Because we just put the current frame directly on top of the previous one. So it's just going to accumulate, right? Now you will see there are some weird pixels here. That's because our surface is 32 pixel wide, but our animation is only 30 frames. So in some frames, the object will skip pixel. We can fix that by just adjusting the keyframe, extend it a bit. I move it to the 32 frames, and when I play the animation, the pixel will disappear. But we still have this solid trail. We want this trail to disappear to fade away over time. So we're gonna remove the feedback, right click, and then select the feedback. And before we send the previous frame to use as a trail, we're gonna modulate it using the color adjust. If I set the opacity or the alpha property to 0.5, then if you half the opacity of the previous frame before sending it to the blend node. So we're gonna put the color adjust node here in the middle. So we're gonna send this to color adjust, send it to the background properties, and then feedback the output back to the color adjust node. Select feedback. Now when you try to play the animation, you will see the trail will now appear with less and less opacity, right? This is a little bit too extreme, maybe. You can adjust by changing the alpha properties and now the trail will be more pronounced. Now, if you go to the add node dialog and then search for trail, you will see another node that just called trail. This is a node specifically made for creating a trail animation. So you can try to send the same surface to it. And when you play the animation, we will do the same thing, right? If we have this solid trail. So let's just adjust the alpha over lifespan properties. And now you will see that it will attempt to do the same thing as a feedback node. But there are some clear difference here. The first is that it's not rely on feedback system. It's actually using shader in the background. There are also some weird artifacts here as well. So generally it can do similar things. So you should play around with different ways to get the effect that you want. Another effect that can be achieved using the feedback system is this reaction diffusion types kind of animation. So we're gonna start with some noise. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna repeatedly blur the image and then sharpen it back again. You may see some YouTube video about that. I saw it too. It's a really interesting concept. I might put a link in the description where you can repeatedly blur and then sharpen to create some really interesting patterns. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna blur it and then we're gonna go to the setting and set the oversampling to repeat. And then we're gonna search for sharpen. Here you will see the high pass node. Again, go to the oversample and then set it to repeat. And then we can feedback the output from high pass back to uh, the blur node. Here when you play the animation, you will see some interesting patterns start to emerge. When you change the noise, it will also change the result. So this is kind of pattern generally called a reaction diffusion. Again, if you right click and then search for reaction diffusion, there's also a node called reaction diffusion. 
the concept of reaction diffusion is way broader than just blurring and sharpening, right? It's referring to a reaction of two or more chemical that's kind of like intercept each other. If you try to connect the surface to the reaction diffusion here, you see nothing. But if you try to feedback from the reacted back to the input, then you might see something interesting as well. Now so far, I only show you the way to use feedback system with a surface. But you can also use feedback system with any data type as well. You can use it with number. So if you have number and then you have the math node, you say add it by one, feedback the output back in the equation to create incremental node. Now let's take a look at a more uh, useful example. So in the example, we have two vector two, right? And the vector two down here is animated. You can see in the timeline here. But the keyframe is actually set to hold, which I already covered on the animation video. And it means that the value will not interpolate. It will just jump around immediately. If we try to plug the output here to the center properties of the draw shape node, gonna get something like this. The shape just gonna jump around. So what if we want a smooth transition between each point? Well, your first idea may be just, just change the keyframes to different types, right? Obviously. But let's just say that this may be an input or a data you extract from other sources and you cannot change the, the keyframe here. Maybe the data doesn't come from an animation. Maybe a data you get from a CSV file or something like that. And you want to smoothly transition between each point. There are multiple ways to do that. You can create your own transition function. But one pretty common way to smooth out the properties over time is to use lerp. So in this setup, we have one vector. This one will be the initial values. We set to 0, 0. We have the vector here, the animating vector. But what we're going to do is we're going to create a math node. This is just a math node. And then you set type to lerp. Connect the initial value to the first one. Connect the animating value to the second one. The amount here will control the speed of transition. And this is the important part. We're going to use the feedback system to send the result back as the input, as the form value here. And now when we connect the output here, the result to the center position here, just for visualization, you will see that our circle now, not necessarily completely smooth, but it has some transition between each point, right? It go from a sudden movement to a more smooth movement. And that happens because we use the lerp. What the lerp does is it's just gonna interpolate between values. Right here we said the value we want to come from and the two would be like the target and the amount here would be the ratio. So if you set it to half, the output here gonna be the middle point between the from and the two. If you set it to zero, then it's gonna be equal to from. If you set it to one, it's gonna be equal to the two values. And this is how we control the speed. I have made some uh, visualization here. In the first frames, if you lerp, from the 0, 0 point to the destination here, 32, 32, at the ratio of 0 0.5. This is a value to be set, right? But in the next frames, the from value now is not the original values, but it's a feedback values. So it's the same result as the previous frame. Now this point in the middle becomes the starting point, and the lerp result becomes the middle point between the new starting point and the target. The target stays the same, but the original point change. And one thing is, because the distance between the original point and the target point is far, the object will move very fast in the beginning. But when the original point moves closer and closer to the target, the destination point, the object will slow down. Here, it will move to the new point. And then the next frames, you can see that the distance becomes shorter and then shorter and then shorter until we reach the destination. For this example, we set the lerp amount to 0 0.5. So it's just gonna move half of the distance it has left. And if you change the amount to be lower, then the object will move slower. And if you make it really high, then it's gonna be pretty much instant. And this concept can be expanded way further to create a way more complex animation. You can even create some interactive games using this feedback system. So this is just the surface of what you can do with this system. I want you to experiment with it yourself to see what you can come up with. And I hope that this video is useful for you. So. Thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next one.